Hello and welcome to my channel, Code with Lewis. Today, I'm going to introduce you to Tailwind, which is a CSS framework that I've personally been implementing recently, and I've kind of fell in love with it, and which is why I want to do a video on it. The goal of this video is to introduce Tailwind to a CSS developer, front-end developer, um, and hopefully convert them into a Tailwind advocate. So if this person is you, please do let me know in the comments down below. Uh, for a quick overview, Tailwind removes the need to write the majority of your CSS, let's just say 95% um, to be safe, and by using specific class names in the element tags in your HTML. Tailwind is kind of like a sort of massive pre-built database. It contains all of the CSS attributes um, you would typically be using in your um, styling of your front-end um, server, but instead of writing the CSS, you put it as class names in the tags. So um, say, for example, you want to do some padding, you would actually write how you'd want the padding done in the element tags. Let's head over to the Tailwind documentation to have a look at how this is done in more detail. So I just want to quickly give some sort of reference for people uh, visually versus what I'm saying, um, because you might be thinking what the hell is this person talking about still. Um, so I just want to show the sort of Tailwind a website where they give us examples of what's happening here and as I said we have this image element here and the classes are being added here um, but of course what you'd expect we're not writing w-24 in the CSS um, file that is being done for us that is being built for us by a Tailwind watcher which sort of sees us type this and they create um, that CSS file for us add that sort of CSS class for us um, in the output file um, and yeah we can just go through and see like you know font medium here you can sort of recognize these names slightly sort of slightly different um, but they all sort of pertain to the very similar thing um, so here you know this is a medium screen um, that's got rounded none and that's obviously like a border radius mx auto so mx um, is the margin on the x-axis and that is obviously being set to auto. Um, so yeah, you can see that a lot of these things, uh, they might look a bit weird now, but actually when you learn the what they're doing, it's actually quite simple. Let's go through some of the pros of Tailwind, which I believe um, are many and quite substantial. Um, so to begin, using Tailwind, it will really help you to reduce the number of files that are in your um, application. So for example, the adopt poor full stack application I made in the bootcamp uh, with a group of uh, friends. The problem with that is that when it got too heavy, it got very, very big very, very quickly. Um, and you know, this was just an application we built in two weeks, never mind a full scale production application. You started having so many CSS files within components, within pages, and within our roots. And of course, um, when you're when you're doing this, there may be CSS left over when you're sort of extracting a component. From a page maybe you have a long page and you want to reduce the size of that page uh, page code you extract some of that um, into a component and you might have residual code left over in the parent css class and that may interfere with some css you're doing in the child class or maybe if you've got two similar web pages that you're using um like similar class names for of course that could affect it as well um so yeah you really want to reduce those files because you don't want to see um you know, don't have to be in a situation where there's leftover code in a different CSS file uh, that is affecting code that you're doing in a different one. So yeah, reducing the files sort of automatically helps overcome that. Not having the redundant CSS and poorly written CSS coming up your app is something that Tailwind really helps to do. And um, I saw Ken C. Dodds mention, um, I can't remember where, but he said that in PayPal, there was like 90% of the code base, uh, CSS wise, was kind of just redundant code. It didn't actually do anything. And of course, that's something you want to avoid um, because you end up in the sort of cycle of uh, pointlessly adding extra classes, um, you know, trying to improve the specificity rating of whatever your uh, sort of element selector is. Um, you're maybe right, banging buttons, adding IDs, all these sort of things. Um, just desperately trying to change it. I tell when there is no. You remove that desperation of trying to change it 
um, by overriding and spamming this class is trying to do it. Well, I think that's a massive thing that Tailwind really helps with. You can add in custom classes as well. Um, so I'm going to show you a great use case in this video where we have a nav bar that has um, a, a lot of uh, very similar sort of attributes that we want to add to it. And here we can just create a custom CSS class um, that will have all these custom attributes in and then add that to the specific elements we want to um, have those attributes. So yeah, adding that custom CSS is important and exactly why I said there's, you know, 95%, the, the vast majority of your code will be done with the class names, but then when you want to do something very specific, you can just create your own custom CSS uh, class. And finally, it's really good for responsiveness. Um, in the application we're going to build, the website we're going to build, we're going to pre-program some breakpoints. I'm going to use those as prefixes to um, change things in our application. So when we have um, you know, the typical full screen, mobile screen with the nav bar that has a burger bar, we're going to have that with the class as um, obviously flex or block, however you want to do it to begin with. But then when we hit, say, medium size screen, but medium hidden. And um, so it's really simple to do like that. It, it really helps simplify the process. That was the one thing that I think, you know, really brought me into that sort of loving tailwind, I suppose, um, as well as the, just they're not writing the CSS, because exactly as I said, like in the adopt port, you know, they ended up being so many classes um, and so many instances of CSS files, they start overlapping and it just gets kind of tough sometimes knowing where things are and what's doing what. Um, especially when you're like rushing doing a two week project, <laughs> if we had a bit more time, uh, we could probably be a bit more um, snazzy with it. As well as pros, of course, there are some cons um, and it can really complicate like a simple HTML file um, and it's not as easy to digestible because of that. I mean, if you think you've got all these class names added into your HTML, your HTML is probably, um, well, it will not be as easy digestible and readable. Um, for someone and especially if you're new to HTML um, it's, it's probably going to be quite tough to do it so I would personally suggest uh, you know, at least a, a decent bit of experience in HTML and CSS as well because you need to know what you're looking for when you're looking in the documentation and trying to do what you're trying to do in the actual code. With Bootstrap which is like a rival framework um, you get sort of pre-built components which are really useful if you're trying to build a website quickly or you don't want to worry too much uh, about customizing the style and having a, the amazing style that maybe you could do with Tailwind. Um, it means there's a lot more room, like positive wise, there's a lot more room for um, Tailwind to customize your elements, but sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you just want clean pre-built components. Um, and that is somewhere where Tailwind lacks. That's the end of the overview for now. I did actually really want to drop this tutorial on the same day. But when I was recording it last night, I just realized that there probably wouldn't be enough time to do it um, to the standard that I wanted it to be. So yeah, that is coming soon. I wanted to break up these videos into more sort of digestible parts anyway, because if it was say one 50 minute video, um, it just wouldn't be as clean. Um, and also it just gives the option for people that maybe do like watching the longer form tutorials to have the one big version and also the one broke down. So yeah. Oh, this is just the overview uh, for now. The, the sort of coding side will be coming uh, in the next few days. I hope this overview was informative for you. Please do let me know if you had any experience with Tailwind, whether it was good, maybe bad. Um, yeah, please let me know. And as I said, the tutorial will be dropping. Um, so if you're looking forward to that, please give me a like, please give me a subscribe um, for more content.